Hey everybody, welcome back. In this tutorial, we will be doing our own version of Hello World. For any of you who aren't sure what Hello World means, uh, this is the term that we use uh, in computer science and other industries also use it uh, as your baseline into learning something. So in computer science or software engineering, when we're going to uh, be creating a program for the first time, we will just have it print to the screen, Hello World, because this is the first time that our program is saying hello to the world, essentially. So. Uh, so yeah, so in, in this one, uh, we're, we're going to be doing a few things, so let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a screen, and in the screen it's going to have one line of text, and it's going to have one image, and we're going to have one button. And when the user presses the button, the text is going to change, and the image will change. And a kind of a bonus feature, a variant of this would be having the image and text be replaced with the random ones from memory. Uh, but we're going to start with the basic thing is where, like I said, we're going to have a string of text, one image and one button and have the user press that button. And every time they press the button, the image is going to change. Now, the number of images that it changes to is up to you. The type of strings that it changes is up to you. Um, but we may just do three and it go through them uh, in a linear fashion. So so in doing this, we're going to introduce you to some UI elements, the uh, UI images or sprites. We're going to introduce you to buttons and how I'm going to make those buttons uh, react to user input. So let's uh, first thing we're going to do is let's just start with a brand new project. Uh, so we're going to go to file new project. And I'm going to name my project. Um, uh, rad underscore hello underscore world. So rad hello world. Oh, I kind of want to make that capitalize. There we go. We're going to be using uh, 2D because this is going to be on a 2D um, screen. And the location is entirely up to you. Like I said, I like to do mine in a dev folder somewhere. Organization, I'm going to disable analytics. I don't really care. And we're going to create a project. Uh, I don't really want to save that. You can save the previous one if you want for reference later. Okay, here we are in our basic Unity setup. We've got, uh, it comes with your main camera, as I've stated before, and you have your assets folder. We don't have anything in the assets folder, which is okay uh, for now. And then we've got your inspector on the right here. Now, before we start, uh, uh, there are a few different ways you can you can view your, your layout. So one of the ways, so if we go to layout here in the top right, hit that, they give you some options. You can do a two by three. Some people like that, it just moves your screens here. You have your hierarchy here. You've got um, everything that's in your project that you've imported here, your, your assets. Uh, you can also see that. And then you have your inspector. Then you can also do a four split. This is really good if you're doing more 3D. So you can look at a 3D model from four different perspectives. Um, I've used it before, still not my favorite, but I do see a lot of people in the industry using this for 3D. Uh, games and 3D interactive stuff. And then you have your tall. And then you have your wide. Some people really enjoy that. It gives this a wider uh, space. Uh, and then we can always go back to default. And then you can make your own layout. And then if you make your own layout, you can go to here and you can save your layout. So what I'm going to do. Um, so when I do 2D work, I like to see what is happening in my scene here and I also like seeing what's happening in my game at the same time uh, because here as we'll see later you can change your aspect ratio so and that's good for uh, you know making sure things are going to fit on your screen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this guy over here and I'm going to give them kind of a separate space so now I have my scene here and I have my my game window here it's entirely up to you guys how you want to do it, but this is this is how I personally like to do my 2D workflow. Uh, and I may switch back and forth uh, throughout the series as well. And sometimes I'll make this one 
even bigger. But it's nice to see what's happening live here. And if you're not sure, just stay tuned. You know, we'll get to that. And, and I promise it will start to make sense later uh, why we would want to do this. So again, here's our scene. This is everything that's happening with our editor. You can see the different elements. Right now we have a main camera and that's all we have. So the <clears throat> first thing we want to do is we want to, I mean, think about what we want to do. We want to have a, a screen that has a string of text that the user can read. We want to have a space for one image and we have space for one button. So first thing we do, well, if the true first thing you should do is you go ahead and save your scenes. Let's go to file. We're going to save scene as, and I'm just going to call this main because this is my main scene. And for this project, we're only going to have one scene, but it's still good to go ahead and, and save that. We're going to save that in our a, uh, assets folder. We're going to save that. And now if you look down here, it has shown up in our assets folder. So we can always double click that to get to it. So if you're in, a, you can always have practice scenes so you can try new things out so you don't have to destroy a scene you've built. And then you would save your scenes here and then you would put them in a folder called scenes. But right now, since we only have one scene, we're going to leave it as is right here in our assets folder. So we need, uh, so the three things we need, text, a space for an image, and a button. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in the text. So I'm gonna go up here, make sure I'm in the main. I'm gonna right click, and then I'm going to go to game object, UI, and then I'm gonna put in text. Now, if you look here, it put in text down here at the bottom. Now, we can move that text around however we wish now something that it automatically did and this is new for me i just saw it for the first time let me scroll back into where we were so this is where we were but if you look it put in a text but it also put this thing in called the canvas um usually uh you can put in text by itself it doesn't need to be this way but they have started including it on this canvas which we can talk about later um, I'm not going to be focused on the canvas now. We're going to talk about the canvas and panels in in the next um, in the next tutorial. So we're just going to leave that as is. Just know that the text showed up here and it's down here on the bottom. Okay. Now, now we can move this text around if we want. So we can kind of do the. Uh, I, I I double clicked on text right here in the uh, hierarchy, and so when you double click on a game object. Uh, which this is what each one of these are, each one of these are game objects, it will bring that into focus in your scene view. So let me pull this out a little bit so you can see. It pulls it into focus in your scene. So now we can move this around. And if you see what I'm doing here in my scene, if you look in my game window, it you can see what's happening as well. I'm moving that text around. So, you know, what if we might want to have this text in the middle of the screen? So let's pull this guy out and let's just put him right there in the middle of the screen. That's something that Unity does really nice with UI elements. Um, if you see it kind of like uh, Adobe products, it will the, see these uh, blue lines here that move. So when I pull, let me zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see, pull this down as far as it'll let me. And as I come to the middle of the screen, it will kind of lock in. And, and, and if you move it with your mouse, you'll see that it kind of locks in a bit too. So even if I move a little bit, it stays. And then I can do the same thing. I can lock it in here. So we're going to put that in the middle of the screen. And you know what? Since it's kind of small, we can make the font. I'm gonna, over here on the right, I'm going to make the font size a little bigger. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can hold down the left click and scroll. Or you can type in a number too. So I'm just going to put 20. There you go. New text. I'm going to leave the rest of this as is. Ah, well, I might make it bold just so it's a little easier to read. Okay, so we have our text and that's cool. The next thing we need is an image. So let's put in an image. So we'll also go to, we're going to right click on my, since we have a canvas here, I'm going to use the canvas. You could probably, let's see what happens if I, game objects, UI image. So it automatically puts it in the canvas. That's a, that's a new feature for me. I, I've usually just gone right here and right clicked it. So we're learning together. So we go up the top here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna center, if you look in my scene right here on the left, I'm going to just put a little bit of the new text right in the center um, of the screen there, but just 
north a bit just to be away. So this is where our image is going to go. And next thing we're going to add is we're going to add a button. So we're going to go to main, right click, click on game object. Now, you saw that the text and the image both when I pull them in, they became a child object of the canvas. So we could, the other way we can do it is we can go to canvas, right click, go to UI, uh, go to button, and it will make it a, a child of that um, of this game object as well. So that's the proper way to do it. But if you're putting in a UI element, what I think what it's doing is it's finding the first canvas and putting it as a child of that canvas. If you don't know what children children and parents are, basically it means that if I so if I if I click on canvas here, it has one, two, it has three child objects. And I know because if I hit the arrow, they go right up under the canvas. If I open it, they're children. So these have a parent of the canvas, which is great later on because we can move the canvas around and the children will follow. For example, I have canvas highlighted. If I move my camp, well, you can't move it from this point, but um, because it's anchored to the screen. But if it wasn't anchored to the screen, it, it can it would move around. That's why we really want to use panels. You, in every scene, you have one canvas. But like I said, we're going to talk about that in the next tutorial. So I'm just going to so we back to where what we did. So we created the button, and on this button, this button also has a child of text. So you have the button here, and if you look in the inspector over here, the button has a rec, rec transform. This is more for 2D for rectangles. It's got a canvas renderer. Uh, you don't have to worry about some of these, but uh, I'll let you know if, if you need to look into these more. It has an image. This is a script, but this is where you tell it what image to associate with the button if you want to use an image for the button. Or you can use a UI sprite, which is a uh, source image. You can make it just change color. You can give it materials. Um, and then you have this uh, button script, and this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is what tells the button what to do when it's pressed. And we're going to explore this in a second uh, when we put our functionality in for the button. So let's move the button. So the button, when it first came in, it went to the exact middle of the screen, but it was over our text. So we're just going to move this down. So maybe we'll move it down. We'll put it over here. Let's put this here. So well, we'll move that back. And you know, let's make this image really big. Why don't we just fill up our whole canvas with it? It's kind of cool. Then we'll bring this down. And then we'll have this button down here. Okay, cool. So this is what we got. You can see that. So this is what we have, and everything looks cool. Now, just to make sure everything's running, we can uh, we can go, we can we can make this scene play, which brings me to a new a new thing we haven't talked about. Uh, you, these buttons right here at the top, you have this play button here, and if I hit play button, it will play my game. Anything that's in this game window, it's going to play it. So the code is running right now. Your base code that you that you don't see yet, but is under the hood to make Unity run uh, the program on the, uh, the device. So it's running right now. Now I can hit the button. You can see the button changing color every time I hit it. See that? That's just the basic code that's already given to it. So when it presses it, it gives it a slightly different color. But nothing's happening because we haven't told it to make anything happen. So uh, I'm going to stop play. And don't worry about these two buttons yet. The, the pause is just to pause it in the middle of playing. We're not going to really use these right now. We'll come back to these later. Uh, but play will get everything up and going and running.